Hello everyone, I'm Omid Mohadesi and I'll be presenting our paper Thought Bubbles, a proxy into players' mental model development on behalf of my colleagues at Northeastern University. Studying mental models has been getting a lot of attention recently in HGI research, such as how people form mental models of AI agents, game avatars, or gestural interfaces. And the goal of these studies range from informing designs to predicting behavior or improving learning outcomes. But there is still room for research, especially to understand mental model development with pe when people interact with uh, HCI technologies. And one of the technologies that can particularly benefit from a theoretical understanding of mental models is game-based simulations that are used for studying human decision-making in complex systems. The question is, how should we extract mental models of people in their interaction with game-based simulations? And then how should we evaluate the results of elicitation to get insight into mental model development over time? In this paper, we present such elicitation technique that we call thought bubbles, and we use it to evoke players' thought processes diegetically and in the context. And we also show a mixed method approach for analyzing the elicited mental models to study mental model development over time. Here, we use a game at environment to simulate a dynamic supply chain simulation, and we use this game to uh, immerse human players into a specific role of a supply chain for studying how humans make supply chain decisions. And this is based on our previous work, and I encourage you to check it out for more information about GameMet. As part of GameMets, we design thought bubbles for eliciting mental models of human decision makers. A thought bubble has three main characteristics. First, we query players using thought bubbles in the context and during the interaction to prevent any interference with the elicitation process. And second, we use an open-ended prompt where we ask, how do you think we are doing? And by doing that, we aim to reduce framing bias and at the same time helping players to verbalize their thought process. And finally, we do all of this over time where players respond to this prompt eight times during the course of the game. Our mixed method approach involves using qualitative coding for player comments in response to thought bubbles. So we, we conducted two experimental studies where we obtained a codebook in study one and tested its reliability by applying it to study two. And in both of the studies, we used quantitative analysis to get insight into mental model development. But an important point here is that we want to gain a theoretical understanding of mental model development. So we must align the outcomes of qualitative coding process with existing theories on mental models. Here, we leverage the situation awareness theory as a guiding framework for our qualitative analysis in study one and for obtaining our codebook. This situation awareness model was specifically um, introduced for dynamic decision-making environments such as ours and described how people's perception, comprehension, and projection affect their mental model development and drives their decisions. Perception in particular refers to how people perceive the elements of the environment. Comprehension uh, is about how people make sense of the environment based on the elements that they perceive. And finally, projection refers to how people project future events and status of the environment. Using situation awareness theory, we obtained this codebook that captures the aspect of players' mental models. What we did was basically looking at what aspect of supply chain players are describing in their responses. For example, if they are talking about inventory, demand, orders, or um, backlog costs, and then we also look at how it is described by, described by players using a, either a verb or adjective. Uh, for example, if they are talking about an increase or decrease in their costs, or if their response reflects positive or negative framing about what they uh, perceive the environment to be. Um, and we also looked at how their responses are related to these aspects of perception, comprehension, and projection. During the remainder of this presentation, I will share some of the insights from study two, but please check out the paper for more detailed analysis and results from both studies. In a study two, players played the role of a wholesaler in a game and experiment, replicating a supply chain network. Um, they were playing the role of wholesaler one, as you can see in this network. They were responsible for ordering from 
uh, a supplier and then allocating their inventory to downstream health centers. They were also receiving order recommendations from the game. And at some point, players also experienced a supply disruption in their uh, manufacture. We also considered a manipulation where for some players, we provided information about their supplier inventory. And we were interested to see how this information sharing in this context affects mental model development of players. To complement the data from thought bubbles, we also obtained behavioral profiles of players using their observable actions in the game. We used a method from our previous paper to extract these profiles, which are called hoarders, reactors, and followers, and are based on how much players deviated from recommended order amounts. Um, more specifically, hoarders deviated from order recommendations more frequently, reactors uh, followed those recommendations, but after hearing about the disruption, they started to deviate and followers almost always follow those order recommendations. Again, please check out our CAR22 paper for more details about these behavioral profiles. By counting the player's comments that reflected each aspect of situation awareness, we could see differences in mental model development uh, of players depending on the level of information sharing. Uh, hoarders showed, as you can see here, hoarders showed more perception less comprehension and also more projections when they had access to information, reactors represented quite the opposite pattern by showing less perception, more comprehension, and less projections. Also, if we look at mental model development over time, not only these differences are clear, but we can also observe trends that are affected by information sharing and the disruption period. For example, reactors showed a decline in comprehension with information and also an increase in projection, in projection levels when they didn't have access to information. These results provide insight on cognitive aspects of behavior as reflected in players' articulation of their thought process. We obtained these insights by designing thought bubbles to allow diegetic elicitation using an open-ended prompt and uh, collecting data over time. Diegetic elicitation allows for assessing mental models with minimal distractions to the players. Using an open-ended prompt allows players to verbalize their thought processes. And elicitation over time allows for studying mental model development as a process that happens during the interaction, which is really important when we think about how the interaction shapes behavior and affects the uh, mental model development. Thought bubbles has significant implications for HCI research. When using this method, it is important to consider the elicitation context, whether it's an, uh, it is a game or non-game environment. While we use thought bubbles in a uh, game environment, um, we can also envision that it can be used in non-game simulation interfaces, for example. But it is important to scrutinize how people would engage with, uh, with the prompt in a non-game setting. It is also important to uh, define the goal of the elicitation, whether it's to understand mental models as a process or extracting the structure or representation of mental models. If the goal is extracting representation of mental models as an outcome, perhaps asking players uh, to respond to thought bubbles prompt in intervals is probably less relevant. Also, um, the type of task being studied can also affect the choice of the theory for qualitative analysis. Here, we, I showed that we used situation awareness because it mapped well to our dynamic decision-making task, but it might be less relevant for other types of tasks. And finally, the use of thought bubbles is not limited to interaction with game-based simulations, and it can also be used to study mental models in human AI interaction or interaction with game-based learning environments, which provides promising avenues for future HCI research. Thank you for listening. I'm very happy to have the chance to present this work, and I'd like to thank my colleagues as well as the reviewers for providing insightful comments. Please check out our website for more information and let me know if you have any questions.